Today's quiz involves a Super Bowl. Super Bowls are fabulous devices. They bounce nearly as high as from where you drop them. Our quiz today involves more than one Super Bowl, in fact, five. They're put together along this metal rod. Uh, each one of these Super Bowls has a hole in the center. They are able to slide along that metal bar. Aside from the base ball, which is gonna be the largest, there's a metal cage that'll allow only the smallest of the balls to actually go anywhere. So the question we have for today is, if I were to drop this apparatus onto the ground, just like I did with my other Super Bowl, what would happen to the entire apparatus? This is what that quiz looks like on paper. As always, try and explain your answer to the fullest extent and then mark your confidence about what you have written down there. Typical student responses are three. The first is, if a super ball drops down and nearly comes to the same height, well, the whole apparatus will drop down and nearly come to the same height. Others will say, no, 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 no. There's gonna be a shock absorbing mechanism on this. When it hits the ground, each one of these is gonna somehow absorb and they're gonna end up stopping. And then the third explanation is, when this ends up hitting the ground, all of these are gonna go down, but only this blue one, this smallest one, is gonna be able to uh, go off the top. So those are our typical student explanations. Of the three student responses, it was the last that's correct. Whenever I drop this apparatus, everything on the bottom will stop and only this small bluest uh, mass will end up going into the air. Well, that's interesting in itself. It'll be much more interesting if we actually go and do a much deeper dive uh, to figure out how fast it's going. I happen to also know that each of these super balls have a particular mass. This is gonna be 100 grams, this will be 50, 25, 15, and finally five. If we draw this out, we'll actually be able to find out how fast it's gonna go. So I'm gonna take a minute to draw this out. I happen to know the masses, I'm gonna put them in. We're gonna convert these to kilograms. So I'll do the factor label very quickly for the bottom one. After that, I think we'll be able to do them in our head. So the first one, I'm gonna call it mass five, is equal to 100 grams. We normally put the mass inside the object. I wanna make that to kilograms. I'll do a quick factor label. And I know there's 1,000 grams and one kilogram, our grams cross out 100 divided by 1,000, 0.1. So we'll say that's 0.1 kilograms. If the next one is half of that, then it's gonna be 50 uh, grams. So I'll put M4 equals 0 0.050 kilograms. Mass three would be 25 grams, which would be 0 0.025 kilograms. Mass two is gonna be 0 0.015 kilograms. And mass one is gonna end up being 0 0.005 kilograms. Now, when these are dropping together, and I'll draw another picture in a moment here, we can think of these as all being one object. So I'll put them together. Just kind of put all of these together right here, and I could call them mass one plus two plus three plus four plus five, and I can add those up. 100 grams plus 50 is 150, 175, 190, 195. So all of this together equals 0.195 kilograms. 
One of the other things that we want to think about is if I were to drop this, let's just use a meter stick and let's say that I'm draw, dropping it from a meter in height. How fast is it going to hit the ground? Because we really do want to figure out how fast this is going to um, uh, launch off. So what I could say is, well, my velocity initial right here would be equal to zero and I want it to end up hitting the ground somewhere down here. And this distance from here to here, I'll say is one meter. There's my meter stick here. And I could say our distance equals one meter. And it's gonna be dropping that one meter. So I'll put a negative on there. I wanna figure out what would be the, uh, be the velocity down here. I'll put a little question mark here. I'm gonna list all my variables and then pick an equation let's solve for this. So I can say um, V F V I A T and D. We'll list the variables that we know, find the one that we want, which is V F. I know that we're starting at zero meters per second. I know gravity is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And then I can end up saying my distance is uh, negative one meter. I want to solve for VF. If I have VI, A, and D, I'm going to use our kinematics equation number two, which we've done in another video. I'll write that out very quickly. VF uh, squared equals VI squared plus 2AD. I know my VI is going to be equal to zero, so I'm going to get rid of that right away. Say so that's equal to zero, and zero squared is still zero. It just goes away. VF would therefore be equal to, if I square it, just 2A and then our D. So now I'll take the F would be the square root of 2 times our A and our D, which is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And then our distance, which is going to be negative 1 meter. Negative and negative make a positive. So I have 2 times 1, which is 2 times 9.8, which would be 19.6. VF would be equal to um, the square root of 19.6, and that's going to be meter times meter, meter squared, all over second squared. I can then take uh, the velocity final. Let me grab a calculator for this. and I get about 4.4. So my velocity is 4.4, and that would be meters all over seconds. Now, there's a trick here because the ball is clearly going down, not up. But remember, when we take a square root, we get two answers. So it's actually going to be negative 4.4. That's what it's going to hit the ground. I'm going to need to move the camera over, and then we'll end up uh, drawing the problem out. Now that we know how fast it's going to hit the ground, we can figure out how fast it's going to go up. All right, so let's draw this out now. do the before and after picture like we've done before. My before picture is it's going to be coming down towards the ground. So I'll have uh, my largest ball here. It's going to be coming down. It's going to hit the ground. Once it hits the ground, the four balls are going to end up uh, striking the ground, staying there, and only the top ball will launch. So this is going to be our after picture.
This will be mass 2, 3, 4, and 5. But remember, they're going to end up stopping. So the velocity down here, the velocity of 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus, I'm sorry, these would be 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5, that equals 0. We need to know for mass number 1 here, what is the velocity of mass number 1? The way we'll solve this is we'll just use conservation of momentum. We'll say momentum before equals our momentum after. In this case, we could say the objects together when they're falling down have a certain amount of mass and velocity. So I could say the momentum of 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 as they're falling down and hitting into the ground will then lead to the momentum of these four objects, momentum of 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus the momentum of object 1. Now I can say where momentum equals our mass and our velocity. But right away we know that this is going to end up being zero. So this entire term is going to be zero. So I can just say that zero and it goes away. So I can end up saying, well, I've got my m1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 times the velocity of 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 must equal, and I only have this object right here that has momentum afterwards, which would be m1, v1, and those are afters. And I should use the little after signs too. I can keep track. So if I wanted to solve for V1, all I need to do is divide by M1. So I'll do that. M1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5. V1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 divided by my mass 1 after, and that will give me my V1 after. We have all the values. Uh, from over there, we knew that this was a total mass of 0.195 kilograms. We know this velocity, we'll use our 4.4. It's not gonna, uh, remember when we bounced, we lost a little because it's not a perfect bounce. Uh, maybe we'll just use four in this case, or even just three. I'll use four. Just to give us a ballpark of how fast we might expect this small one to, to fly off. So I'll put my values in here. I've got my 0.195. Kilograms times four meters per second, all divided by my mass one, which mass one was equal to 0 0.005 kilograms. Notice our units are gonna cross out kilogram, kilogram, and that will be V1 after. Put that in my calculator. So I'll take, clear that. 0.195 times 4 divided by 0 0.005. Okay, I think I might have gotten an error there because it says 156. 156 is very, very fast. If I multiplied that by 2, you know, I'm talking about 300, more than 300 miles an hour. This seems like a mistake but it's not. And that's what I'm gonna show you next. All right, I'm down in the stairwell here because this is gonna fly off pretty fast. I'll show you. When I drop this, we'll say it's gonna hit the ground at about four meters per second. I'll then redo this in slow motion. again in slow motion.
back. Rather incredible. What a device. Now remember, we ended up calculating 156 on that calculator. So the velocity one after was 156 meters per second. Now, the conversion is 2.24 per miles an hour times 2.24. That's 350 miles an hour. So I'll put it this way, about 350 miles per hour. Just absolutely incredible. Now, there's a few little problems here. First of all, on this metal to rubber contact point, and if I put it closer, there's gonna be some friction. So often what I'll do is I'll take a little bit of chalk, put it on there, help reduce any of that. If there's any moisture in the air between the metal and the rubber, it's gonna get stuck. Another problem is if this were to try to fall and hit on an angle, this is gonna end up jamming itself and often it won't fire at all. So the straighter the hit, the faster it is. I don't actually think it went 350, it'll be lower than that because of our errors. But I do wanna show you you don't need specialized equipment for this. You can end up taking a basketball and make sure you're using something soft like a tennis ball and let these drop together. If I drop them, the big mass along with this other mass are coming together. They have a total amount of momentum, but when they hit the ground, the bottom object often stops, therefore putting all of the momentum into the smaller object. I'll do this hopefully safely here. Let's try this. And you can see, you can get it to work even with bouncy balls that aren't super balls or a specialized apparatus. Physics is grand. All right, that's your quiz for today.